Okay, we're continuing the toolbar here. Uh, next two, uh, actually, a few things we're going to be showing here is the roll, ripple, and um, and the rate stretch tool here along the toolbar. Um, r the ripple tool, let's talk about that first, uh, what that does. Uh, we've talked about the arrow tool, which has a trim function. I'm going to zoom up on this clip here. Let's say if we want to shorten this uh, clip right here. This is what the ripple tool basically does. And so if we grab this... Uh, the end. We're on our arrow tool right now. If you grab this clip and you trim it back, let's say you don't want her to stand up quite yet. So we're going to trim this back to where she's sitting down. So right there. We trimmed it back to where she's sitting down. And you notice that there's this gap right here. Uh, basically, we're, we trim this clip to the left down, and we're going to click in here, just select this area, and hit delete. And it fills the gap. That is what the ripple tool does in one move. Um, what it does is it will edit if let's choose this we're going to come over and, and select the ripple edit tool or if you hit B as in Bob um, then it will bring up the the ripple tool now if you'll notice when I go to the edge of a clip here to an edit here um, you'll notice the arrow as it points toward one clip or the other this is changed from the red that was uh, when you had the arrow selected it it's now changed from a red to a yellow um, arrow pointing toward one clip. That is your ripple edit. If it's red, it's just trimming. If it's uh, yellow, you're on ripple. Which means if I grab this and we trim it back to where she sits down, you'll notice up there it brings up two windows. Notice the, the window on the left as I move that back and forth, you'll see the uh, out point changing. So it's changing the out point, but you'll notice the end point of the next clip, of the following clip to the right up there uh, in the program window, is uh, not doing anything. So the ripple tool will only uh, change the clip that you're pointing toward and leave the other clip alone. But now watch what happens when she sits down. I let go, and it fills the gap for you. I'm going to undo that. Um, now we're going to go back to uh, this clip here. If you do the same thing, we're going to trim this. Um, and actually, I can trim this backwards as well. What I'm going to do, if I, pull, if I drag it to the right, it's going to... Um, trim the endpoint and you'll notice down at the bottom there I've changed it by one second and it shows the new duration of the clip if you drag it to the left into a clip it's going to extend the clip so look if we want to bring this to where she sits down on the wide shot right there I've changed the endpoint I've back timed it uh, about uh, one minute and five frames as you notice on the number there uh, it does the minus 105 and I let go and that has trimmed this endpoint backwards. That is basically the same thing as doing this. Let me do it the long way. I did undo. I'm going to hit A for my arrow, uh, for my uh, tr select tracks forward. I'm going to grab this here, and I'm going to move it out. I moved all those clips forward there. <coughs> Use my arrow tool, grab this, and trim it backwards to where she sits down, and fill the gap. Um, and there we go. That was like three or four different moves there. Basically, with the ripple tool, you're doing that all at once. You just hit B, click on this, and say, I want her to be sitting down on that shot right there. And you just expanded the, extended the out endpoint um, of this clip while leaving the adjacent clips alone. Now, um, this is helpful when you're trying to match two clips. Notice we have kind of a medium shot here, and then it cuts to a wide shot as she stands up. Um, I'm going to intentionally mismatch this. Say the edit was first done where it was mismatched a little bit. Uh, let's have her kind of halfway sitting down there. Okay, so if it's mismatched, now watch this shot here. As we play through it, she starts standing up, and she starts standing up again. So this shot is mismatched. This is an instant where the ripple edit will come in handy. Um, once again, as we're playing through, she stands up. Look how far she is standing up, and then it cuts to the next shot, and she stands up again. So we're mismatched probably by about like six frames there. Um, so what we want to do is we want to find kind of the matching point. Actually, what we can do is we can just get uh, our ripple tool. Come over to this. We're going to shrink this clip right here. We're, go or we're going to change the endpoint of the clip pointing to the right here. Get it right on the edit where it points to the right, right there. Click. And I'm going to actually I'm going to turn off my snap tool here because I don't want it snapping to the edge. I want kind of a free reign with this. So I'm going to turn off my snap tool. Uh, shortcut for that is just S. I'm going to grab this and I'm going to pull it to the right, changing my endpoint. And now you'll notice those two frames up there. We can use those to match. Get it right where it looks like they're matching and let go. Now as we play through, 
a little close, maybe back a couple more frames. Now let's try it. I did it back a few frames. There we go. And that looks like it matches right there. So that's what the ripple tool, where that comes in handy, is helping to, to really fine tune and match um, uh, going from shot to shot. Uh, let's go into, now we're going to go on to the uh, roll edit tool. This is quite a popular um, uh, tool here to use in, in professional editing. Uh, let's say we want to change the time here when she stands up. Actually, let's show you what it does and we'll show you a practical use here. I'm going to hit N or select this. N as in Nancy uh, to choose the, uh, edit, the, the roll edit tool. And you notice it's got this X through it until you bring it down to the edit. Same as the ripple tool. You have to get it right on an edit before. And you'll notice it has arrows facing toward both clips. What this does is it will change the in point and the out point of an edit of these both of these clips uh, simultaneously. Uh, it's basically like doing this. Say I want my edit to actually happen here. And I use my arrow tool. I drag that back. Actually, I'm going to turn my snap tool back on. S. Notice my snap tool turn back on. I drag that, drop it, it'll snap to my playhead right there. And I grab this clip here and change the end point. So I change the out point to this clip, change the end point. Now you'll notice it cuts before she stands up. There you go. And it's still kind of timed out right because I used the ripple tool to, to get that matched. So that move that I just performed right there um, is kind of the, the, the long way of doing it. If you use the ripple tool, I'm going to undo, get it back to normal here. I'm going to use my ripple tool, hit N as in Nancy, uh, or select it over in your toolbar. And now if I come over here and grab this edit and drag it, you'll notice it shows up here in a window up in your source monitor, it shows, or in your program monitor, it shows you the left clip's new out point and the right clip's new in point. As we change that, it's changing them simultaneously. So you can change what. So we use the ripple tool to match them, and now we're using the roll tool to, to to decide where the edit happens. So say we want to do it right when she starts standing up, right there, and let's see how that looks. So let's play through it. She starts to stand up, and that looks pretty good. It just depends on when do you want it to cut to the wide shot. Do you want it where she's standing all the way up, or do you want it where she's sitting down? So once again, to summarize on the roll, ripple and roll tools, the ripple tool helps to get an edit matched from shot to shot, and the roll tool helps you uh, perform the uh, decide where the edit actually takes place once it's been matched. Because right here, you'll notice on this uh, medium shot and this wider shot, these were shot uh, with the, the same with one single camera, uh, two, and the actor went through it twice or actually several times, but you'll notice as we roll back, it'll stay somewhat in time until uh, you see some of the variations in the timing, but the, you'll notice there she finally reaches down with one hand and the timing is a little bit different because eventually it'll go out of sync uh, with the timing. But, um, but yeah, you can kind of decide where you want the edit to occur with your roll tool. Okay, uh, next episode we'll be going covering the uh, rate stretch tool and the eraser.